Welcome back to the workshop. This is the third video in the mini series on router table projects. I'll put a link to the playlist up above and down below. In this video, I'm going to cut some half blind dovetails using the Incra positioner system on the router table to make a suspended shelf to go in my kitchen. So this is the area in the kitchen where my nearest and dearest, my reason for living, would like the shelf too. But I'm not happy to drill through the slate effect tile on the back of the wall. So what I intend to do is to have a vertical going up from the shelf on the left hand side and I'll drill down through the bridging units at the top and also draw, drill in through the glass door cabinet on the right hand side to support the shelf. And that join between the vertical and the horizontal is where I intend to put the half blind dovetails to. Now the carcasses of my units are 18 mil and I want to get as thick a shelf as possible in there so it's good and sturdy and will support the weight that's put on it. So I'm thinking if I have something around an inch with the bevel on the top, so about 24, 25 mil bevel top and bottom, it will end up looking almost 18 mil, but will allow me to get the thicker stock in there so it supports itself. So I know the thickness of the timber that I want to use. And I also know the maximum width that I can afford to go to, which is 295 mil. So armed with that information, I can then look to the template guide to see which one suits the job in hand. I've got the template guide open at a page that shows me three templates that would each accommodate the thickness of material I've got. What I'm looking for is to see whether one of these templates will allow me to align my material so that I get a pin at each end or a tail at each end, and that one won't. This one will. So I'm in the middle of a pin or a tail there and there. So that one's good and this one won't either. So MDOVJ would quite happily work for me at 295 mil. So now I know which template I'm going to be using, I can start my setup. My template guide tells me I need a 587 degree dovetail bit. It also tells me that I need to set my initial depth of cut to 15 mil and my initial depth of cut spacing to 28 mil. So let's head over to the router table and make a start. So the first job is to get the height of the bit to 15 mil. So second job is to set the widest part of the router cutter perpendicular to the fence and then slide the fence up so it's as close as you can get it to dead center. Lock the fence in place and then slide one of the scales so that centers underneath the hairline cursor. Next, I'm going to make any fine adjustments required to get that depth of cut absolutely perfect. So I'm going to get my right angle fence, keep it firmly pressed down on the table, lock it in place and clamp it. So I've got a couple of pieces of scrap MDF that I'm going to actually make the cuts on and a piece of scrap ply that I'm going to use as a backing board to reduce any tear out. Keep those firmly pressed down on the table up against the fence and then clamp them to the right angle fixture. Now I'm gonna make a single pass with the router bit projecting halfway through the fence where we left it at the zero mark. And then I'm gonna retract the fence by the amount it says on the template, which was 28 mil. Now I can try the joint and see whether it fits. And that's a shade too tight. And the book's got a handy little phrase, heighten to tighten, lower to loosen. So I'm gonna drop that bit down just a fraction and make the cut again. Let's try that again. Now it's nearly there, but still a little tight. So I'll drop it down 
a fraction more, run one more test, and I think we'll be good. So third time's the charm. Happy with that. With my depth of cut set, I can now move on to set center of the board. In order to set center of the board, the manual says to mark the approximate center of your board using a tape measure. Again, set the bit so the widest part of the cutter is perpendicular to the fence, and then line up the mark on the center of your board with the center of your cutter, which is about there. Now that's going to be roughly center, so the process is quite simple. Pass the board over the right a bit one way, turn the board 180 degrees, pass it over again. And if you're off center, the second pass is going to remove some more material. As I'm sure you heard then, the second pass remove an extra bit of material. So I need to make some micro adjustments. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up or not, but there's a fractional amount of daylight to be seen through that side. So I'm gonna move the fence back a hair and try again. those two little points you heard where it caught I'm quite happy with the fact that that was a little bit of breakout front and back that caught so I'm going to call that center of board set and my final setup job is to slide cut 5a on the MWJ template so it's underneath the hairline cursor so that's all my setup jobs complete. Depth of cut, center of board, and my scale registered. So I'm now ready to start cutting the dovetails proper. And first up are the tail cuts. For me, the tail cuts go on the vertical board. So in order to cut the tails, the first job is to put a rebate at the back of the tail board to allow for the fact that when we cut the pins, the router is going to leave a curved back. So, what I'm going to do is bring the fence up so it's in line with the router bit. Then I'm going to use one of my spare scales just to register on any number it's relevant. All I want to do is to measure the amount that I move the fence back as I cut the rebate. My template guide says I want a rebate of about 8 mil. And I'm going to start nice and slowly. I'm going to do a 1 mil pass and then I'll do three mil passes and the balance so that I get to eight mil. So before I cut my tails, I need to decide whether they're the A cuts or the B cuts. And as I'm sure you're aware, on the tails, we need a shoulder at each end. So offering my piece up to the template I can see that I need cut set B to cut my tails. So I'm ready to make my B cuts. My tail board's clamped to my right angle fixture. I've got my fence set to the first B cut where the bit projects slightly from the router bit. And I'm gonna pass the board across the router bit and then advance the fence to the next B cut and so on and so on.
And finally for the pins. Pins are cut with the board flat down on the table. Because I use the B cuts for the tails, I'm going to use the A cuts for the pins. So I've got my fence set up as close to the rate right of it as possible. I'll make a series of test cuts using this piece of scrap MDF. And then I'll try the cut for size, which is going to be too small. But the amount it's too small is the amount I'll need to set the fence back by. Hope that made sense. Happy with that. So just before I glue the two pieces together, a couple of trim cuts to make. I need to trim the shelf to length. I need to trim the vertical to height. Then I've got a notch to make around the light palmet that's underneath the bridging unit. A couple of saw marks on the leading edge of the board, so I'm just going to take that off with a hand plane. Then a small round over as opposed to a bevel that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So type one, two for this doesn't need to be food safe. So now to put a little round over on the front top and bottom. I know I said earlier I was going to put a bevel there, but after looking at the doors on the units, a bevel will match in with the existing much better. I'm going with a mineral oil and beeswax solution for the finish. Gives the wood a beautiful luster, penetrates a little, beeswax seals it, really easy to repair, really easy to reapply. I know you wouldn't initially think of using dovetails for this kind of situation but the natural strength of the joint is really perfect and the mineral oil and beeswax has really honeyed the oak so it matches in with the existing doors really really well i'm chuffed to bits with it and i really hope her indoors will be pleased as well so this is chuck feelgood your roving reporter live from the kitchen signing out Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ta-ra.